Hey guys, how you guys doing? So I'm coming on uh, with a new video today. So as you may notice I no longer have the V2 Neo. In its place I got an S1 Pro. Um, just want to give you a rundown real quick of what I have so far in it. Just they're very small changes, but went ahead and added a second uh, spool holder thingy which also has bearings on it so you can spin um, you can actually spin it around I did not know you could actually do that so I had this one just lying around and I saw a video of someone who 3D printed one one of those uh, spool holder things and just twisted it on there and I'm like hey I have one of those and it spins and I just twist it on there and it's, it looks pretty cool not sure how I'm going to do it with the filament sensor but I'll probably just run it without the sensor, maybe. I'll, I'll double check that later. I've also went ahead and upgraded uh, to a 5015 uh, blower fan. This mod was from uh, Printables. I'll leave the mod down below. Uh, it's very cool, actually. It um, It's pretty sleek. And it does give you access so you can still view your nozzle through the front, which not many do. Many are like kind of like lower than this. And they just block access for you to view the nozzle, which I, I don't like. In fact, one of the things I liked about it with the original one is that you can actually see the entire nozzle through the side. But this one has a pretty poor cooling performance. It's not too bad, but I do want to print a little bit faster, so I upgraded to this. So uh, that's been working pretty well. We have the... Um, I printed out this little bracket here to hold... Um, hold this cable in place so it's not drooping everywhere so that kind of keeps it tight and um, one of the things I did immediately after I, I did my first test print was change out the the roller wheels they had flat spots they were just I guess tight from factory and remember these things kind of stay in place until it gets sold so you know most of the time um, this happened with my V2 Neo as well the wheels were uh, bent so every time you would move the extruder left or right you would feel those flat spots just catching onto the, the gantry and stuff same thing with the bed um I, rem I changed the wheels off the bed and now everything's super smooth i really love the dual axis uh the, the dual z motors with the timing belt on this one it was just it's just perfect everything just moves so fluently the light bar i love the light bar um not a big fan of the touchscreen. I felt like on the V2 Neo or on the S1, just a regular one with the, the knob screen, you would have a lot more options plus custom firmwares. I'm not too sure if this one has custom firmware yet. I haven't updated the firmware. I'm still looking into that. But if you have an S1 Pro and you're running some sort of custom firmware where it gives you just basically all the options that you need, uh, definitely let me know. But my man, look at this drawer. It's huge. Um, I noticed that my springs are different than the ones other people get. I took up the bed, I did compress them, and they're very, really solid, they're really good. Plus, uh, the wheels, you can spin them around really smoothly. I haven't had it go off level yet. The, um, resume print after you, um, have a power outage works great. I did a test, and that's how it's turning out so far. Um, so it actually works pretty well. I love the extruder, um, it's super lightweight. I tried my best to cable manage this um, cable from the 5050 roller fan uh, to the, the, the board, the breakout board in the back. Got yeah, just some cable management there, but I'll, I'll get that later. Um, so just so you know, when you're upgrading the fan, you really wanna get some JST connectors. I believe these are, uh, from factory they're like 1.25 millimeters I'll double check that but I have a whole pack of them so uh, I had to actually use two to get the right length because otherwise just one is too short for the ones I bought but you can make you just gotta make sure that you have enough length from the 5050 blower fan to the breakout board um but yeah other than that this machine um is very easy to set up it's it was actually quite pleasant. Um, I had a pretty good experience so far. The print quality is great. Um, not as great as I want it to be, but I believe that's just the filament I'm using. It's it's very bad filament, to be honest. It doesn't string, but 
it's inconsistent it's like instead of being like the 1.75 it's 1.65 in some areas 0.6 in some other areas and 0.7 in some other areas so it's not like consistent at all um so i have to modify the um filament diameter and the, and the slicer and also bring down the flow rate between 70 to uh between 70 and 90 percent uh in order to get decent because i'm trying to print this out right now and it, it's just fusing together because um i haven't dialed in the flow rate yet for this on the v2 neo i had the flow rate down to like around 73 percent so on this one i'm just printing the flow rate until i get it so uh right now i have it at 90 i'm gonna probably go all the way down to 70 until it starts giving me um these hinges uh, that are free moving but um other than that um i'm gonna check out the firmware stuff see if i can get something a little bit nicer with more control um but yeah i love this printer so far uh, it's quite a good upgrade if you have the v2 neo or if this is going to be your first printer highly recommend it this is has to be the easiest to set up i've ever done um everything already comes um straight out of out of the box because of the dual uh, z uh, motors with the timing belt on top with the synchronizing belt it, it just works perfectly fine um i like the i like the actual surface it, it's actually quite bigger but it makes sense because this is the actual entire space from here to there what the bed takes up oh uh, and also a uh, quick thing um this thing the, the cable for the bed catches to the side of here to the motor oh that's hot that's hot so i printed out these little um i, I don't know what they're called but there's they're just like little clips that go to your belt so basically what happens is that this part right here in particular would kind of catch onto the bed and because it's rubber it just kind of like sticks to it and and the bed would basically not allow it to go all the way here it would catch or it would catch on the stepper motor so to do that i printed out two of these little um clips it's this right here and this this one kind of keeps it away from the stepper motor and this one allows it to not rub against this or it does rub against it but it, it makes it so it doesn't stick to it um and that's that's basically all i've done I seen some people had some issues at the, um, the cable, the, the 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 connections to the X motor and the and and, and limit switch were not long enough. But in my case, it, it was fine. Um, so let me see if I can replicate that. So look at that right there. So with that little clip right there, it makes it so it doesn't catch to the side of the bed. And with this one, it just makes it go a little bit off to the side, to the left, so it doesn't catch on the motor itself. But, um, you know what, let's take out this print real quick. I'm going to put you down for a sec. Okay, so this was a 90% flow. I'm just dialing in this foam, and it's pretty bad. It still hasn't moved, but... If you notice, it's already an improvement from the last one. This one's just fully fused. This one's kind of there. It's probably going to be like 80% flow for this one. But um, I'm going to dial it back to 80%, and that'll probably work. But uh, definitely recommend the printer. Um, I'll leave the STLs I use for this printer in the description down below. If you want to download them, I recommend, uh, I recommend you print this one and these little clips right here those are definitely a must on this one so I'll leave any questions you have down below on this printer I'll try and answer them as best as i can and uh post some updates as well because i did order the k1 it, the k1 the quality k1 was just a total nightmare for me it was just it, it just from the ups people to i guess the warehouse people uh, i don't know what happened but i just got a totally it, it wasn't like messed up but the bed came off and it was just it was just not letting me go past the initial screen the self-check so luckily i bought it through amazon uh i didn't want to deal with quality support i sent them an email they never responded back to me other than just with the generic oh you know what try make sure the cab cables aren't loose or something about uh stress gauge i don't know what the hell that is but uh anyways i didn't want to deal with them they didn't ever responded back after that so 
did my return through Amazon. It's already on its way back. I just hope I get a full refund without any hassle. And I might buy another one later on. I'll probably go for the K1 Max. Um, I'm still trying to get a P1P, but they're just not available in Mexico. And I don't want to pay. A, I don't want to pay a premium for it. It's like twice or three times the price. So, if you have any recommendations for me on this printer? If you have any questions, I'll post updates on this one too. But yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.